Hello, everybody. Welcome back into a Sunday with Anthony Schlegel. It is the difference with Schlegs and Ohio State. Uh, one day after the analysis of Ohio State 54, Iowa 10, a huge win for the Buckeyes, another blowout. And but Schlegs, I I don't know. Thanks again for coming back and joining. And oh, yeah, absolutely. The podcast. Let's go. Uh, I so the word that I used a bunch on Saturday, leaving the horseshoe was weird. It just felt weird to me. And I hmm. and I felt like the more I thought about it over the last, I don't know, 24 hours or so or less, it was like, I don't know if that's the right way to feel about a 44-point win. They were favored by 27. The defense did its part. The offense figured out a way to, to score against one of the best defenses in the country. And I think that – I'll just speak for myself. I know that there's a lot of you know, outside analysis of this team and opinions that were formed about what was happening in the first two quarters. And so I'm just going to speak for myself that maybe I became a prisoner of that moment early on and said, ah, something doesn't seem right. And then you still get to play four full quarters of a game. Right. Like, and that was a pretty good, clear picture of the full team. Now, I'm just going to say that for myself, but it does seem like that is what's happening with a lot of evaluations of Ohio State on Saturday. So you're going up against, again, we all know that Iowa's offense is very, <laughs> is extremely poor. Yeah. Okay. Um, their defense is consistently one of the top 10 in the country. They've been running the same under front quarters, man match zone principles for the last I don't know, since 95, probably, I don't know when it was right. uh, that they started doing that, but I just remember playing them 20 years ago, and it was the exact same thing. And they, again, that was their system. They did it at an elite level. They zone pressure you. They played man match zone. They play a little bit of man, but that was what they did all the time. And they were just so fundamentally sound that they were always very difficult to play against um, for an offense. What you just said is – four quarters of football and listen we know this do you want to stop the run or do you want to stop the pass we saw in the Iowa game that it was we're going to stop the run and that's what they were doing they had they, they were loading the box they were playing man match zone they were having zone pressures and they were going to stop the run guess what we made an adjustment which is what you're allowed to do at halftime that's why it's called halftime there's two halves. There's four quarters. And during halftime, you make adjustments. That's what great coaches and great teams that understand their schemes are able to do to go out and produce a second half in which CJ then threw his four touchdowns all coming in the second half. Do you not want to see, you know, three trips inside the red zone being, you know, held to field goals? Do you, yeah, you want to see points scored and the game would have been really out of reach, but you're also figuring it out. But again, it goes back. How are you going to stop Ohio State? You either got to stop the run and 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 believe in your secondary to be able to handle the pass because they're always going to be able to score. And then your defense also has to get turnovers. Our defense played very, very well. And, I mean, they only gave up three points. So yeah. You're going to win know, a lot of games that way. I, You know, you take this and you look and – I was fine with it. The first half was not what necessarily wanted you see, what, what you wanted to see because you wanted to see them score on those possessions, but they made the adjustments and they came out and they had a great second half and you have a 54 to 10 uh, victory. And again, Urban said this, vict all victories are hard. I mean, we, we have been, I don't, I don't want to say educated, but we have just have a comfort level uh, at Ohio State where wins are just something that should occur. Mm -hmm. And that's the expectation of what I'll say. And everybody knows that. However, you're allowed to adjust and have a great second half. And they had a great second half. I mean, they were up at halftime, 26, 10. All right, cool. You're up 16 points at halftime <laughs> versus a very stout Iowa defense. Cause their offense again, not good. Uh, but you came out, you adjusted and you, and you scored And in that, in that span, we saw at the beginning, I mean, CJ made some great throws. They talked about in the broadcast, him rolling out to his left and hitting people. You saw Marvin Harrison when he caught his first touchdown in the second half. What a great route that was because he stemmed the guy hard inside, gave him some room on the sideline for them, CJ, to make that throw. And then he also made a great catch uh, in the end zone. You saw yeah. 
you know, something of concerning was Jackson coming out. But again, we said it before, Fleming has really stepped up. He will be one of my difference guys at the end, but he has really stepped up. He had a really good game. Uh, and Buka, again, showed out. And that's what you got to do in these type of wins, along with the defense playing at a really high level. Yeah, so to that point, Schlegs, I asked Emeka after the game, I said, like, I know that you guys – are the only ones that really matter. You hold yourself to the highest standard. You act, you yeah. know this. You've been in that locker room, and and so I just sort of like wanted to ask him. I was like, "Do you feel like this was weird, disjointed, not what you wanted?" And he said, "The way we viewed it uh, was that was about as bad as Ohio State's offense could have played in their mind, and they won by forty four. And he said, yes. "Guess what? We get to build on that, and that seems like it could be pretty scary for other teams." And so I don't, I didn't want it to make it seem like, and I wanted to ask, and I, I always want to go face to face with those people and say that, like, if I'm going to say that this felt weird or that that Ohio State wasn't satisfied, it's not about me. It, it's more about how the Buckeyes feel about that, and they didn't feel like it was their best performance. So from that perspective, I can say, well, they're going to nitpick this, so we can look at that too. But they also have the recognition that you don't always beat Big Ten teams by 44 points. Uh, on a week in week out basis, and that part can be celebrated. Yeah, I mean, it's the good thing of the introspection for them as players and coaches, knowing that that wasn't their best performance in that particular half. They made adjustments, they came out, and there's really, you know, some really good things in the second half. Does CJ want his completion to be under 70%? The answer is no. You know, does he want four touchdowns to be in the, all in the second half? The answer is no. They're going to go back, and, and again, we talk about. CJ and, and lessons learned and moving forward to his progression of being an NFL quarterback. There's times where, yes, you just got to pull it down and just go move the chains and slide to have another series. And again, that's complimentary football because if I can move the chains twice and play field position against really great teams, that's going to allow my defense to rest and it's going to flip the field position. So again, are there times CJ when you could have ran and just got another first down on a third down? The answer is yes, as opposed to trying to, to throw the perfect pass in, in, in that scenario, which one of those was that that interception by their Excellent. Mike linebacker, who's a really good player. He threw that in his own coverage between three people. He could have easily just stepped up, ran for the first down, slid, and moved on. That's a progression. That's learning. It's weeks, it's week seven, but there's six game. Those are things that will carry you forward. And it's not about where you are right now. It's about where you are at the end. So as they build on this, they know they're going to go down. They're going to really evaluate themselves hard. The coaches will as well. And the players know what they got to do. And they're going to work on those things at practice. It's if you see this trend continue mm -hmm. to where that becomes a concern. Yeah. I think that that's a, a great point, Schlegs, there about C.J. Stroud because there's those are really only two plays in the entire game, right? They don't They shouldn't overshadow the rest. I know right. that we're going to talk about it. Like, yeah, maybe he can run and get those two first downs. And maybe in a different game, that's a that's a bigger difference. But if he's still capable of doing that on the other 75 snaps and bouncing back from the interception and that, you know, that not taking the first down with his legs and the three throws that he made, the first to a Mecca, then to Marvin Harrison, and then coming back on the touchdown, uh, you probably live with like one or two bad snaps over the course of a game. Not that you want them. But it's sort of the give and take of actually playing a full game of football. Yeah, and 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 that's where he will grow. Again, only his second year. And I think sometimes when you are potentially a Heisman front runner and and everybody's like, Well, this really ruined his chances. No, it didn't. I mean, he's still number one in the country in touchdowns or tied for it. Mm -hmm. You know? Uh his yards have like are are lower on the totem pole, so to speak, because he's really only played halves of football. <laughs> as opposed to full games, and that will come as well. But he's going to continue to grow. He's going to continue to get better. And part of that is is just taking what the defense gives you. Because, yeah, if I don't throw that pick or I'm able to move the chains, that just sets me up for another opportunity, not necessarily for own, his own yards, but mm -hmm. for the offense to sustain drives, own the time of possession, et cetera, et cetera, that you will need in closer, evenly matched games as the season progresses. Okay, so we know that Iowa's offense is comically terrible. But Ohio State and the Silver Bullets still had to go out there and hold up their end of the bargain. That was about as aggressive as I can remember in a while for that group. They they knew there was some blood in the water, and they attacked it. 
Yeah, lots of blood in the water, uh, especially <laughs> when you know they can't run the football and they can't throw the football. That's pretty good, you know. Uh, and, and Coach Knowles was right about how he was, you know, attacking them. And, and you know, Zach Harrison, kudos to him. He had a really good game. Um, and really, that's kind of what his fit will eventually will be in the NFL. Like, Zach Harrison is a, a, five, a five technique and a three four. Like, that's what he is. He's not an edge rusher. Um, he's not as fluid as Jack or, or a TJ, but he will be that guy and that inside rip and his ability to move and be big. Like that's what he's going to be. And you kind of saw that yesterday and he has a uh, potential there, you know, watching Tommy get a pick six. That was fantastic. Being able to, on a couple of the short fields that they have, you know, get the ball back for an offense or, or set them up with the turnovers. I mean, that's what you wanted to see. That was one of the things earlier in the year where were all the turnovers? And then you just got six in this game. Awesome. Yeah. But that's something that has to sustain. And we talked about last week on, you know, some of the difference makers. And I, I, I didn't know who would lead in interceptions, but whoever that nickelback was, that's what we were talking about. That's the guy that's going to make those picks because it tips some turnovers. That's, that's what happens. And that's what McAllister got his second one. The first one was just, he stepped up. I, I believe he was working probably the curl to flat and just, walked into an easy pick. And the second one was off of a guy that was in the curl flat and it was tipped to him and he got his second one. That's, that's really the guy that's going to get the most interceptions on the season. And you have to have two in the game, which again, that's the first in Ohio state since 2009, that one guy has had two picks yeah. in a game. And then even if you look offensively, that's the first time since 1995 that Iowa has given up 54, 54 points. So take all that in consideration Great win by the Buckeyes getting ready to go to Penn State. All right, Schlegs, it is time for the difference. Difference makers. Who do you got? You don't have to do the whole roster, but uh, there are a lot of options for sure. Well, I, I, I think I'll just, I'll just say defensively, and it would just pick one from – I thought Zach had a really good game. I thought that that's going to build him some confidence uh, later on. We'll be able to move him around maybe in the inside again with uh, – with, you know, number 51, Hall. Yep. And and you didn't see a lot of him either. Again, there's a lot of guys that are on some pitch counts uh, in this game. But but Zach having success, uh, McAllister having success in that nickel slot, that's a huge position in, in this defense. And mm -hmm. really, all great defenses having a, a really strong nickel. And then obviously, Tommy with a pick six, uh, being able to run the show. And then offensively, I'm just going to say, Fleming has done a fantastic job. Besides Marvin and Buka, who we know, and they get a lot of accolades, I just I just think that Fleming, for being here for such a long time and the expectation level, he's really risen to the occasion mm -hmm. uh, with Jackson being out because now it's kind of those three that you see predominantly. And, you know, the offense hasn't slowed. Yeah. You know, do you want Jackson back 100%? because of the threat that he brings, but the three guys that are out there predominantly have done a phenomenal job. So excited about this Penn state game coming up in happy Valley, big new kickoff. The noon is bumpy. It's great for us to watch it because <laughs> it just starts off your day and you're watching the Buckeye game. And then you can go in and get a little quick circuit pump time in the home gym here. Um, but those guys were, were my uh, difference makers for this week. All right. So when you go on the road and you go to Penn state and it's, in a rector set and they crank up the crazy cat not so happy and, valley yeah yeah what what's it like to go there what what are the keys to uh, <coughs> as the, you know ohio state's gonna have to get ready for that noise and it's not a white out it is going to be at noon as you said um that's a little bit different but that place is intimidating and it's something that you have to prepare for all week long i think this game really set them up well for what's going to happen in happy valley because it's going to be doing your job and going along with the ebbs and flow of a game, uh, we're not going to get six turnovers versus Penn State. The two turnovers that we gave up uh, for, you know, the touchdown, mm -hmm. and we got the one right back off the pick, but still that would have been great field position. You can't have that in, that, in these type of games. So offensively, you got to be secure with the football, and I believe that they're going to go out and score, and then it will be handling – the quarterback because it all runs through is it Clifford, right? Yep, it all Clifford. runs it all yeah, it all runs through him. So being able to affect him 
not allow him to continue to move the chains uh, in the run game. But passing wise, our our secondary really stepping up in this game, I think, will be vital. Iowa's not going to threaten our corners, and we talked about that. So in this game, they have some guys that can impact you on the perimeter. Our DBs are really going to have to have a good game. All right, big week ahead for Ohio State. They have put win number seven in the bank. It was a blowout of Iowa, fifty-four to ten. Had to have Schlegs in for a Sunday to talk about it on the difference. Uh, for the podcast, it is great again to have you. Uh, Schlegs, enjoy the rest of your Sunday. Thanks again for joining us. Attack and dominate. Go Bucks. All right. For Schlegs, I'm Austin. We will see you next Sunday. We'll break down Ohio State and Penn State. So long.